Hello? Hey, John, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Well, you know, a little bit of this, a whole lot of that. You're 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 one of these people. I've, we're we're past the uh, the I call it the native season, you know, because Columbus is well, actually we're in the middle of the native season. I for, for, forgot Thanksgiving is coming up, but uh, I didn't really want to talk to you about native issues. I actually want to talk to you about you know how you how you looking at this whole the drama that's that's unfolding with this electoral politics and how it, how it applies to, uh, to to natives. Well. I, as you know, I don't participate in their process. I mean, that's not to say that I don't understand the impacts of who's in office and what they do and that kind of stuff. But, you know, we, just like anybody else who's marginalized, uh, you know, both parties, you know, take, take a, some uh, plenty of ownership in that. Um, Barack Obama and Joe Biden didn't do a whole lot for people of color, including black people for that matter. I mean, we had a lot of conflicts. Um, we had bad laws that were passed, signed into law. I mean, even even if they would have passed, you know, overridden Obama's veto, I mean, there were things like the PACT Act, which shut down, you know, some of our mail order tobacco facilities that were happening. That was a pr- kind of a pretty big boom to our our economy, and they shut it down. I mean, we didn't make people smoke. We just were doing direct sales through the internet and mail and that kind of stuff, and they got shot down by. I mean, they passed a lot of, and that was during the Obama administration. They well, passed uh, an increase in the federal excise tax, and then went after a bunch of native territories for what they call the floor tax, trying to tax up for product that was sitting on our shelf, you know, millions of dollars. And well, and I actually went to Washington and met with the Obama uh, liaison for native issues, and and kind of put a stop to it, but. They didn't do it on their own, and you know, and and they never really, really they still see some uh, some dollars from people after that. So we had a tax act, floor tax, uh, well, the can, can, Dakota Act, the pipeline. You know, we got a lot of. I mean, so can, can, we, put, can we put can we can we put this in go, can we put this into a certain yeah. John? Can we put this into a certain perspective? Now I understand what you're saying, and of course I I can't I'm not going to particularly argue with that, but I'm I am going to argue this. Uh, they are the corporatists. Now, for me, I call people corporatists. I, I, everybody has different labels for different people. You know, people were calling uh, um, the Trump guy a uh, racist, and they were—they were, I don't know what they was calling Biden, but of course he did racist kind of things. But you know, they would throw that word out there. They threw it. But my thing is that, but they were for corporatists. And what really drove it home is when they had this this new uh, woman, this new what they guess they call her a handmaiden on Supreme Court. She's a corporatist too. So what I'm trying to say is that when they went after the Native Americans as far as the cigarette tax and all the rest of that stuff, isn't that a corporatist move? I mean, what I'm trying to say is if we don't label the enemy correctly or or or, or, the, or the deeds of the enemy correctly, are we going to fall into some some sort of a I guess they call it identity thing or whatever they they're calling it these days? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know what to lick, but what I will say is we're impacted by it. I mean, and and I can look at a lot of the stuff and just view it solely as through the lens of being anti-native legislation or anti-native policy. Well, let me go into something else then. Now, now, look, we have what we have right now. It's what we have. Now let's say let's say the Native Americans have been fighting the way they've been fighting. Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick specifically you know uh, I'm talking about ADOS or what we call uh, American descendants of, of slavery people. I'm not talking about new immigrants coming in or anything like that. I'm talking about the people that here mm-hmm. before 1965. Now let, let's say the Native Americans and 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 the, and, and let's call these ADOS or Black Americans have been fighting the longest, right? And Mm-hmm. And, and I'm gonna leave, like I said, I'm going to leave the other people out of it because it sort of muddies the water for what I'm going to try to get to right now. Now that we have this situation that we're in right now, how do the Native Americans, how do the ADOS uh, address the situation we have now? Let me ask you that. Again, I'm not throwing well, anybody I, I else guess, in here. I guess part of, it, part of it, before you know how to address it, you gotta, we don't even envision what does a world look like where we get what we want. I mean, whatever that is. I mean, what, I mean, what does an America look like post now? I mean, so what does it look like going forward for ADOS? What does it look like for Native people? I mean, if we had 
you know, if we could, you know, wave a magic wand, I mean, I mean, and I mean, realistic. I'm not saying get, let's get rid of all white people. I'm not saying anything silly like that. But from a native standpoint, and, and, and from an ADLS standpoint, I mean, there are certain issues. There's, there's a lot of, you know, we can talk about reparations. We can talk about, you know, uh, you know, uh, somehow reconciling the harm that was done. Now, the problem with that is we're only looking backwards, we're not looking forward. We're not saying, well, what are we doing going forward so the harm that was done doesn't continue to, to, to harm us? I mean, and, you know, so when we talk about racism, racism is, you know, is a part of the slavery and genocide and all that stuff. I mean, that's where, that's where it, you know, where it comes from. I mean, so, I mean, so how do we go forward? And, and you know, and one of the issues is that, you know, one of the problems, I guess, is that what we're asking for as Native people is something a little different than what, you know, anybody else is looking, uh, looking for. Uh, looking for. I mean, we're still trying to carve out our distinction. We're not looking for equity within, you know, the U.S. Constitution or, or uh, social equity or racial equity within the U.S. culture. We're, we're still, many of us, I mean, I'm not saying all of us, many of us are still trying to carve out a uh, a distinct existence, a free and independent existence. I'm not talking about isolationists. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, b- building walls around our territory. I mean, I'm just saying that we want to carve out um, much the same way that, you know, there's lots of language in the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, which has no bite, but lots of, you know, bark and yips. I mean, but how... Uh, you know, so I... Uh, I think they say, well, how do we go forward? How, how, you know, how do we address this current administration? I think that has to be framed in having a better understanding on what we, you know, what our goals are. Well, that's my point. I guess I guess you 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 hit on exactly what my question was. But my but but in, almost implied in that question is this administration or whoever have already said that they're going to put so many things in front of issues of native issues or more specifically uh, the American descendant of chattel slavery issues. They're going to put a whole bunch of people in front of, of that. In other words, you you the first the first let's call you the first nation, right? The first nation issues are not first first issues. Issues. The American descendant of child slavery issues are not first issues. They're, 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 they're like, they don't even, they're not even on the agenda as, as far as I can see. So when Yeah, and especially, and, and when you do hear something that refers to Native people or, you know, and again, uh, in a broad way, you know, addressing, you know, social or, or racial equity issues, it doesn't, it's, too much of it's just lip service. I mean, I can, I can name some really, really specific things that this administration should address as far as the issues go. And, and, and these aren't even, I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about them passing legislation. I'm talking about things that they, they already have in place, policies that they're either, uh, that are either racist as they exist today or they have laws in the book that, that they simply don't follow and they don't, you know, what comes to mind is, is gaming, for instance. Today, Native territories are being extorted for gaming revenue from the state. And it's illegal. I mean, and even under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, the the law that the, the U.S. passed um, to, try to, to try to get involved in Native gaming, not to, not to legalize it, it was already legal, but, but to get involved and get the states involved, among the things they were supposed to do was to keep Organized crime and space, as if they're not the same thing, um, out of uh, you know, having an aggressive you know, or, or presence in, in native gaming. So it was only prohibited that states could tax native, uh, native gaming revenue. But if, if a state wanted to work out some sort of deal with native territory, um, some revenue sharing deal, they could offer something to the native territories that had value. And you know, something that they, they could concede that would have value to that gaming enterprise and, and receive a, uh, some revenue sharing out of it. Well, most of that is bullshit. I mean, there's no, there's nothing of, of substance that the states give up, and yet they squeeze an ungodly amount. The Senate has only paid a billion and a half dollars to New York State. The states are right now trying to get another, another half a billion out of, out of them for money that 
that they think that they owe, and another half billion going for so They're trying to get two and a half billion dollars all when all been done out of gaming uh, uh, based on a compact that they have in place right now. Well, it's and interesting. The you, you... solution. I mean, let me get to you. Here's the simple solution. Mm-hmm. The simple solution, and this goes back because most of this battle uh, was already starting to fight before during the Obama Biden uh, administration through up uh, that entire time for the most part. Um, which is where the where the interior department simply has to do their fucking job, and all they're going to do is determine whether these revenue sharing agreements are legal under the 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 intent of uh, of uh, of the, in the gaming regulatory act, and they haven't. They won't. They didn't do it through Obama Biden. They didn't do it through do Trump Pence. And the question is, will this new administration? And it's hard to be optimistic. <laughs> will this new administration? Say, okay, Interior Department, you need to stop the extortion. Because here's the thing. It isn't just that this, whatever the concession is that a state is supposed to give for this revenue sharing, that's not really the issue. Because look, that's not the issue. But what it is is if a, if a native territory doesn't agree to a revenue sharing deal, then the state says, well, we're not going to negotiate a gaming compact that's required under the law. And with the implication that they'll shut you down. And that's the belief that native people have. If they don't give the state to, to uh, play with them uh, with a gaming compact, then they're going to be shut down. Okay, now, let, 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 John, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Let me try. Let me try to put this into focus, right? What what, okay. what, I'm, what I'm hearing you saying is there there is there are laws and everything in place, but those laws I don't want to use this word, but I have to use this word. But those laws are being gamed by a system that doesn't want those laws to be enforced. Okay, now. For, uh, and, and, and what you're trying to say that is the game the game is to well, is to put hold on hold on hold on let me regulate the state not to regulate the native people so they won't they won't use their laws to regulate the people that they have even I can argue all day long about whether they have the authority to stop gaming or not but they do have the authority to stop the state Right, that's my point. I'm trying to say, who, whatever, whatever comes down the pike, they have a way to twist it to their, to to their, to the. I, I still say the corporates, just twist it to their, yeah. to to their, to their will. And and so that's the question: How do you want to stop that? And what kind of allies do you get to stop that? What what what, what is the thing when nobody's focused on that because they keep on throwing stuff in front of that? So you have to fight some other kinds of, of things, be it be it this right for this group of people or that right for that group of people or, or whatever it is. They throw that and then everybody gets enamored with those those new issues and then these old issues that haven't been resolved or even the, or, or even the laws that haven't been enforced get ignored. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm hearing now is that that you know that Biden has made a commitment to put a native person on his cabinet. Like, are you fucking kidding me? How does that address anything? That is like the, the worst kind of window dressing possible. Because what I'm picking is some asshole sellout who, you know, who they can say, oh, they've got a token Indian. It's kind of like um, that, uh, uh, the, wood, that uh, the wooden Indian. Did the wooden Indian. What housing, what was that, Ben, whatever his name was. Yeah, Ben Carson. Carson, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, no, I mean, uh, okay, now, to get, to, but to get back to your point, so, yeah, I mean, how do we, not just individually and collectively, because I, I do agree that, that there are, how do we make sure that they don't push a whole lot of things in front of us on, on these issues, um, or, worse yet, sometimes they'll, they'll distract from these issues to, um, and they'll do some sort of token gesture or, or pay, pay, you know, pay some lip service to us. And, and then people, I mean, Trump is the one who ran around saying that he's done more for black people than any other president in history since Lincoln. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to hear that shit from Biden. Especially <laughs> if it's not, doesn't have any substance to it. <laughs> well, look, 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 let me go at this another way. Uh, what what is your sense? I mean, you're you're in a you're on a certain level of activism. Let me put it that way. And your level of activism is much deeper than you know this window dressing that we see or whatever have you. What is your sense of what again on your level of activism? What is your sense of what are people going to do now that you have the the the, the people have been well people have been sheepled and now you have you have the sheep herders in charge. 
Well, I just tell you, uh, when you ask that question, I mean, the, the problem is, you know, from a native standpoint, is a much of the, the so-called native leadership is not the same as the activist community. So the native leadership, you know, uh, including organizations like the National Congress of the American Indian, they are just a bunch of suck holes. And, and they're, I mean, they're just happy. I mean, look, they stacked up the Trump. I mean, and, and they'll stack up to, up to Biden. And, and they won't push for the, the things that need. And there'll be certain individuals like, you know, the, the few native people who are on Congress that will, you know, will push some sort of legislative agenda. But you know, from the activist community, I don't want them to pass new laws. I mean, I, I want them to back away from their, the burdens that they place on native people. I mean, we could deal with missing and murdered indigenous women if, 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 if you know, the, the states were making it, or the, the feds were making it so difficult for us to even investigate uh, our own missing person. But, you know, the thing is that we can't prosecute a white person. Mm. <laughs> you, know, you know, because they, they get in the way of that. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, the activist community, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to disagree with me from a native standpoint that this gaming issue and the insurance department issue doesn't have to be addressed. But I know there's a whole lot, because not everybody's a gaming, a so-called gaming tribe. You know, I know that, you know, people are going to, they're going to, look, they're going to they're gonna do this environmental stuff, right? And, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that there doesn't need to be some, some real concern for environmental issues, but that can feel like they're doing us a fucking favor because, they, because they, they're doing some, environmental issues. And that's not doing us a favor. This is, this is, that's about survival. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, I, I I got you on that. I, I think, have I lost you? Anyway, I, I got you on no, that. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I, I got you on that. But again, I'm I'm trying to get to this other thing. I, look, it, I, I don't want to give get away right now, but I mean, there's so many levels in the black community that people are dealing, trying to deal with this issue, or with this, um, you know, this whole new, tr this new era of, uh, of the, like I call the sheep herders are now in charge. Uh, my thing again, I'm trying to ask: Is there a dynamic? Uh, uh, I would say activist. I want to say activist. I don't want to say keep away these window dressings. Communities that can change things. Let me put it that way. That can actually, it's in the move, that's in the momentum of changing. Because they know what they're aware that, that we've been sheepled. They're aware that we've been, you know, bamboozled, <laughs> whatever it is. Is there is there a community, is is there an impetus for that right now? Let me ask you that. Yeah, no, I think, I think there is. I mean, the fact that 10,000 people showed up at Standing Rock you know, to stop a pipeline, mm. although they didn't stop it, I mean, gives you an example of, you know, of the grassroots level of activism, uh, you know, but the, the trouble is to get something to rise to that level of attention can be, can be difficult. I mean, but we see it from a native standpoint, you know, most people don't, don't realize that we've got people shutting down the Canadian rail system, shutting down major highways all the time because of, mm. and, you know, because of unjust things, land claims issues and, and that kind of stuff. So no, I think, I think there is, I, I guess, but, the same thing when we when we talk about the window dressing that they may you know you know try to throw at us, um, we we're going to have part of the, the the challenge is that we end up you know, we end up fighting some of our own leadership, even in Standing Rock. And the problem with Standing Rock was the president of the uh, of the uh, the Standing Rock Sioux was uh, Dave Archambo and his sister was Barack Obama's senior policy advisor for, for Native Affairs. So, I mean, it wasn't exactly like he didn't have a, you know, uh, a line of communication with the president. And we turned around and made it sound like like Obama was an ally on that. And, and he wasn't. I mean, this was done during his administration. So part of the whole thing is, and this what concerns me about, about, you know, getting, you know, firing a guy like Trump from the, from the White House, is one thing, but the idea of, of ever being, everybody being so enamored because it's, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and I'll tell you, Kamala Harris has definitely been a friend of the Native people. He, he fought more trust applications, you know, feed of trust applications where Native people were trying to acquire land as, as the Attorney General for California. Mm -hmm. And then she turned around and said, well, that was my job. I, I represented the governor. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the, the Attorney General doesn't really represent the governor, but, but anyway, I mean, so, I, I, 
right now, I I see everybody being so enamored and, and wanting to celebrate. And I, I got to tell you, between you and me, there's only one reason Trump got his ass kicked here. COVID. He didn't, get, he didn't get, you know, lose because of racism or because of, right. you know, be, being the, the ultimate cor- corporatist or, the right. fact, you know, making the wealth, uh, the wealthy richer or anything. I think he didn't lose any of those reasons. Exactly. He lost because of COVID-19. Exactly. Exactly, he would have he would have cruised he would have cruised to another term if it wasn't for COVID. That's for sure, being the same race and, as and, you. And, and anybody who says otherwise is really just lying to themselves. Well, they're, I mean? they're they're not looking at the real numbers. I mean, because you know, uh, well, anyway, I want to get into that because I, I really don't want to talk about 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 about. about. I'm I don't want to say I'm destroyed. For me, I I see uh, 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 I see not hope, but I see hey, this is great for me. Let me put it this way. I have to tell you, I'll be straight up with you. I voted for Trump. Not I'm in Virginia. I voted for Trump, not for for voting for Trump. I voted for Trump because I did not want Joe Biden to have any kind of what we call what they're calling a mandate. I figured he was yeah. going to lose. At least in Virginia, he was going to lose. Virginia was blue enough that he was going to lose. You know, so and of course I vote down ballot. Actually, I wrote in for my congressman who I knew was going to win. I wrote in uh, www.ados.com, ados100.com, 101.com. And for my senator, I wrote in www.producejustice.com, which is the whole thing where we're producing justice with, with uh, Mr. Neely Foods Jr. It's an individual code. So I wrote those in. Then up top, I voted in by, I vote, I voted for Trump, not for Trump. And not even, I don't even think I wanted to put a black eye in the Democrat Party, which I, I hate the Democrats, uh, but only because I didn't want anyone to have a mandate. If I was voting, if I was voting in a in a in a red state, I would have vote. I would have voted some way to make sure that 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 that, that uh, what was called Trump wouldn't have a mandate. Whoever this mandate yeah, thing well, is, what I, I want to get rid I of. I get that. I get that. Because that's that's what they say. Oh, but the populace voted for me. I wish everybody in a blue state would have voted red. Not everybody, but you know, certain the activists would vote, would vote red, and the, the people in the red state, the the, the activists, the blue, would, would vote blue, so that the, no, nobody would get that that popular mandate because that's what they go on. In fact, I heard I heard uh, uh, Biden try to pull that off or whatever have you and, and placate. Yeah. They, they always try to twist this stuff, but no, you didn't get no mandate. Get out of here, you know. No, 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 no. All these people voted. With, the amount of people, that, the, the, the extra people that voted this historic you know, voting situation, you still was so close. You you beat this boy by uh, by by a whisper, and he had COVID against him. What is that? That means that you you was even worse than Hillary. You know, so I don't want to hear. I, I, I said they, they owe they owe their wins to two hundred forty dead people, two hundred forty thousand dead people. That's it. That's who they owe their wins to. That's it. Yeah. But the other thing is, is uh, uh, no, but, 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 but but again, get back. I think there's an opportunity here. Now, yes. So I don't want to. I don't want to suggest that you know that I, I won't even say that that you know that Biden is worse than Trump. Um, the only thing the only thing I'll say is yeah, we haven't done very well with Democrats, you know, either. So mm-hmm. and, and even go on the whole gaming issue. I mean, back get back that just for a second. The problem is. If he, if he was going to address this issue, who's the person that he's going to piss off? He's going to piss off Andrew Cuomo, who is one of the more prominent Democratic governors in, in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I don't see him crossing him. So, I mean, this is where, where I said, is there an opportunity? Yeah, but, and, and I don't know. But I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not um, thrilled about the, the, the native voices that are out there. Some of them are pretty, uh, shock. And, and I know you feel the same way. I got to think some of the the, the 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 black voices that get you know that get the microphone are not the people that most of us want to hear from. That's right. Well, that, that, I guess that's the point. Let, let's let let me end with this. You say that you see some you you, you see some opportunity. Well, what? T- tell me what what opportunity do you see? Well, I, I you know I, again I think shame and <laughs> could be a part of a tool that's used properly, but you know the I'm sorry, is, you said shame. How much? Yeah, shame. I mean, how much pressure can we put on on Biden so he doesn't have to? I mean, he's, he's got enough cha- challenges already. He's got all seventy million bumpers that, uh, that that you know that hate his death. But if the people that he thought that he thinks are his base, I mean, he went. I mean, people running around saying, "Oh yeah, Native people want Arizona for for Biden." Well, I think that's probably bullshit. But you know what? If if, if even the black vote and the native vote you know, got him his win, then 
we should raise hell. And we should raise hell and we should say, all right, but now it's on you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you beat the bad guy. So now what? And, and now, and I think there is an opportunity because, and, and we've got to be as, just as vocal. In fact, we've got to be more vocal with Biden than we would have been with Trump. There you go. There you go. That's if anything. That's what we learned from Obama. We we we, we wasn't vocal enough with Obama, but I got you. Oh, that's that's, that's really the problem. I, yeah. I think we gave we okay. all gave Obama a pass. Okay, there you go. You you you're right. They, these these folks are not yep. getting a pass. You, you you know you know Kamala's going to be the next president. She, I, I call it the next next president because you know. Uh, my my thing is that you know the president is, is elected in the zero year usually uh, meets his demise in, in in office. So Kamala's going to be there. So the 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 question really is, uh, what's her agenda? I don't think people are looking at her um, have, as we say uh, as, I, as they I should. I think major problems with Kamala. Kamala, Kamala and, and let's be honest. I mean, she's not ADOS. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just to be clear here, yeah. you know and. Um, she look. She's she's benefited fine from uh, from white supremacy. You know, I don't yeah. even think the whole thing about the women too. Remember how many women voted for Trump? You know, uh, I don't say white women, but white women voted for Trump. You know, so I don't know. I don't think I don't think this is easy slog for people that they they try to do this identity politics. I don't think it works very well. Yeah. Okay. Look, I man. Mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that, that. You know. I don't know that Kamala is a is a shoe in unless unless Biden dies in office, um, <laughs> which obviously is entirely possible. But as far as running in four years, I don't know that. I, I don't know that that Kamala can, will will make it to a primary uh, as, as a big deal. I uh, know. She did that was the first time. She was. She, she's going to have to use the whole Democrat Party, the whole system. I yeah. mean, right, right now, the yeah. most powerful person in government is actually, you know, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Congress these days. I don't know if if the Republicans actually uh, got rid of some. So I, I don't know how that is because the most powerful person would be Nancy Pelosi, as far as that goes. You know, so it's kind of interesting. I want to see what happens. It's 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 interesting. Look, uh, John, I'm going to yeah. talk to you another time. You know, maybe in the new year. You know, I'll, I'll, All right. I'll leave it with you. you Don't be a stranger. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, if I get something to cross my mind, I'll give you a call. Please. Oh, uh, yeah. You know you know what I do. Okay, man. You yeah. take care. All right. Take All right. Care. Later. All right. Bye. All right.